Welcome back. We're going to talk about variations of the assignment statement. Um, the first variation is called multiple assignment where with one statement you can assign values to multiple variables. In this example we have X, Y, and Z are the variables that will receive new values. And the new value that will be assigned is a value on the very rightmost side, which is 3 plus 5. So you, you may think that X, Y, and Z will all receive the value of 8. And that is correct. But it's important to note the way that this statement actually works. And over here we see that it works right to left. We first assign z to the value, to the result of 3 plus 5, which is an 8. And then we do what? We assign y to the variable y, the result that we assign to z. And finally, we assign to x the result that y is holding. So it's really three assignments here. First, z is assigned the value of 8. Then y is assigned the value of z. And thirdly, x is assigned the value of y. And this again groups from right to left. You do the rightmost assignment first. Another type of assignment is where the assignment operator is combined with an arithmetic operator. Um, so the, the term we use is a combined assignment. You may also view it as an arithmetic assignment. The operators look like an equal sign, which indicates assignment, but they are all but they are preceded by a an arithmetic operator. So plus equal, minus equal, and so forth. So let's look at the meaning. The, the statement sum plus equal uh, amount is short for simply taking the sum and adding the sum to the amount. So it's an it's a, it's a easy way to not repeat the same variable two times. Think of it as updating the value of sum using the current value of sum. Again, I'm going to update the value of sum by adding amount to the current value of sum. That's what it means. Second example, if I say P plus equals 3 plus Y, then it means what? It means take the current value of P and add it to the value of 3 plus Y. Notice that we put parentheses here. And what do, what do parentheses mean? It means before we add the value of the variable itself, we first evaluate 3 plus Y. So here's the rule. The right-hand side is evaluated first. In this case, this is the right-hand side. This is the right-hand side. And then the combined assignment operator is supplied. That simply means we evaluate 5, and then we apply the combined operator, in this case, adding the value of the variable of the left on the left-hand side. All right? Whenever we deal with numbers, it is possible that numbers get too small or too large. For example, if I only have two decimal digits, then the only numbers I can represent, really, are from 0 to 99. If the number that I have is 100, then I cannot represent 100 with two digits. Uh, any attempt to do so means I would have to throw some digit away. So that's an example of overflow. Right. And let's take an interesting look at what happens when overflow occurs. When we have a short integer, the, the largest number that can be 
represented is really this number here, 32,767. You would think if I were to add one to this number, I would get 32,768. But in fact, something very funny happens. Um, if I display the number, it comes out okay. If I add one to the number and try to print it, all of a sudden I go from a very from a big positive number to a big negative number. Let's just demonstrate that in the program that we have here. Uh, just for your for the record, I basically copied this the code out of here and put it into uh, my secure shell editor Pico, and now I'm going to just run it. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to compile it. This thing was called chap3.cpp. And we're going to run it. Look at the code. We're doing exactly what you had. We're going to print the value in the beginning. We're going to print the value after we add one. And we see what the slide says. Alright? Now, how do you know if there's overflow going on in your program. In some programming languages it is possible for you to catch the fact that you had an overflow and display some message or something to alert the user. Unfortunately for C++ and what we know so far you can't really do that. All you can do is observe the phenomenon of moving from a very uh, large positive number to a negative number. Think about it for a moment. It also means I can have a very negative number and I can subtract something from it or add a negative number to it and all of a sudden it becomes positive. That's the sign that you have overflow. What's the solution? Well, a short integer is, is an integer that requires eight, I mean 16 bits. So if I need to represent more digits, then I need more bits. So if you recall the hierarchy of data types, we said there's a short integer followed by an integer which takes up 32 bits. So we'd have to move from the data type short up to the data type int to prevent that problem. We also in C++ have the ability to designate some variables as being constants. What that means is those variables have names just like variables. They have data types, they have names, they have data types, they have values, but their values are locked. By saying const out front, it says whatever we uh, establish as the value of this variable can never be changed in the program. You want to try to see what happens if we try that? Why don't we try that in the program real quickly? And let's see what happens. So I'm going to time being I'm going to erase what we had. Erase all of this. Put the other stuff in here. And I'm just going to call this go in and make an attempt to change it. So why don't we say uh, tax rate plus equal 0.05. What statement is that? What are we doing? We want to update tax rate by adding 0 0.5 to it. Remember, we just talked about the uh, combined operators. Let's see what happens when we try that. We're going to try to compile. And what do we have? It says assignment. We have an error by trying to make an assignment to a read-only variable tax rate. Read-only is just another way of saying you have a constant. So if you have a constant, it is not possible to change it. 
Sometimes we write our constants in uppercase to remind ourselves that they're different from other variables. We can also establish constants in the program by using a preprocessor directive, pound define. And notice in this line, I'm, in, I'm establishing two things. I'm establishing a name followed by a value. And this is not a statement in C++, so there is no semicolon. And what it does, it establishes the fact that wherever num states appears in your program, the compiler treats it as if you had said the number 50. All right. And that ends this brief um, coverage. We have one more to go.